Hey guys, and welcome to Mr. Henning's class video about the angle addition postulate and angle bisectors. Our learning goal for this, this video is that you'll be able to describe the angle addition postulate and solve problems using it. And we'll find that in some of those problems, the angle bisector comes up as well. So, after all, what is this angle addition postulate anyway? Okay, well, let's take a look at it. It's very similar to the segment addition postulate, which we learned in the last unit. Okay, If you recall, a postulate is a relationship in geometry where that is a basic relationship that is taken to be true without proof. It's pretty intuitive. So let's review the segment addition postulate. So this says, if Q is between P and R, okay, so here's P, Here's R, and Q is somewhere in between. Then PQ plus QR is equal to PR. This is the same as saying that, like, for example, this segment is three inches long, this one is five, and the overall segment is 8. It's a pretty basic relationship. Okay, so the angle addition postulate works pretty much the same way. So consider this situation where we've got an angle and then let's see we're talking about angle PQS here. So that would mean angle PQS. Okay, it says that R is in the interior of angle PQS. So I'll put R right here. Okay? By drawing in that extra ray, we have now created multiple angles. Okay, so this angle addition postulate says that the measure of angle PQR, which is this angle right there, plus the measure of angle RQS, which is this angle here, add up to the entire measurement of angle PQS. This is pretty much the same relationship. So here we are given two smaller pieces add up to a whole thing. A general equation frame that we can use to talk about this is that a piece plus another piece adds up to a whole. This is the same concept we've been using with segments, just now with angles. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. There's just a couple basic examples of the angle addition postulate that are pretty intuitive. Question number one is asking for the measure of angle DAB. So tracing that out, that is this angle here. Okay, angle DAB must be the sum of the two angles that are inside of it. So 40 plus 20 is 60. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? Okay, in the second question, we're asked for measure of angle FEG. So tracing that out, starting at F, going to E, and then going over to G, we're looking for the measure of this angle right here. Notice that the entire angle is a right angle, meaning it has a measure of 90 degrees. So 90 minus 20 would leave us with a measure of 70 for measure angle FEG. Okay, but of course we can't keep it that easy. Okay, let's look at a problem such as this. One of the most important parts of solving a problem like this is adding the information that you have to the picture. So let's do that. Measure angle BAC is that. So this is 3x plus 10 degrees. Measure of angle CAD, CAD, that one has a measure of 42 degrees. Then the entire angle, angle DAB, DAB, has a measure of 8x plus 12 degrees. Okay, so can we set up an equation? that would relate these angles to each other? Of course we can. So remember our general equation is that we have 
piece plus a piece equals the whole thing. Okay, so the first piece is the 3x plus 10. Then we have the second piece, which is 42. And the whole thing is 8x plus 12. Okay, that's an equation that we can solve. Let's do that. I'll combine the like terms here, giving us with 52, and just pull the rest of the equation down. Okay, we have x's on opposite sides of the equation, so I want to get all the x terms on one side and all the constants on the other. To do that, I will subtract 3x from both sides, leaving me with 52 equals 5x plus 12. Okay? In order to get the 5x by itself, I need to remove the 12. This will leave us with 40 equals 5x. Dividing both sides by 5 will give us x equals 8. Is this what the question asked for, though? No. Always look for what the question asked for. We are asked to find the measure of angle BAC. We were given before that angle BAC measures 3x plus 10 degrees. So plugging x equals 8 into that, 3 times 8 plus 10, see that's 24 plus 10 is 34. There, the measure of angle BAC must be 34 degrees. Okay, so let's look at when we have an angle bisector. Okay, if you recall, the word bisect comes in two parts. The first part, bi, means two. The second part, sect, means cut. Kind of like dissect, like dissecting a frog in biology. Keep in mind that dissect is a biology term. Bisect is a geometry term. So try not to get the two confused. Okay, so here we have AC, ray AC, is an angle bisector of angle DAB. Angle DAB. Okay, so that means that it's cut in half. So let's just say that the whole thing was 60 degrees. That would tell us that this part is 30 and that part is 30. Another way that we can show that, if we know that the two parts are the same, is to say that those parts are congruent. So we have an arc mark and a little tick mark to show that those two pieces of the angle are congruent. In the case of the angle above, we could say that angle BAC is congruent to angle CAD. Trace those letters out for yourself to make sure that I wrote it right. Okay, so let's solve a problem using this. Here we're given that ray JL bisects angle KJM. Okay? Again, the important part is to put the information into the picture. This will make sure that the relationship verifies your equation. Okay, so we get measure of angle LJM is 3x plus 5, and the measure of angle KJL is 5x minus 19. Okay, we are asked to calculate the measure of angle KJM. But before we can do that, we have to figure out the value of x. Since we know that JL bisects that angle, we know that these two pieces of the angle are congruent. Thus, the 5x plus 19 should be equal to 3x plus 5. There, we have an equation that we can solve. Let's do that real quick. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides to get all the x's on the left-hand side. X's disappear off of the right, leaving me with 2x minus 19 equals 5. We need the constants on the other side, so I'll add the 19 to the other side. 19 disappears over here. 
we are left with 2x equals 24. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x equals 12. Okay, are we done? Nope, because the problem had asked us to calculate the measure of angle KJM. Okay, so I need to plug in the 12 to figure out what the measures of those angles are. If I plug 12 into the first angle, 5 times 12 is 60, minus 19 gives us 41. We can check it by plugging into the other one. 3 times 12 is 36, plus 5 is also 41. This verifies that we solved the algebra correctly because these two should be equal to each other because the angles are congruent. Thus, if I want the measure of the entire angle, angle KJM, then I need to add these two angles, giving us with a total of 82 degrees. There, the measure of angle KJM is 82 degrees. Okay, that wraps it up. Be prepared for the video quiz tomorrow, uh, tomorrow in class. All right, awesome. See you guys.